Be oh, very man. careful. Hold on. Very careful. Oh. You see what I say? I said be very careful. Did he just tap on his glasses? Hold on. Be oh, very man. careful. Hold on. Very careful. Oh. You see what I say? I said be very careful. Why are you why are you disturbing everyone? Why are you? Who are you? No, no, no. Famous, are you a police? No, that's I, I can go get you. No, no, no. No, no, no. You just make an error. No, no, you just make an error. You know why? Because you don't have the right to hold somebody. There's a police. You don't have the right. Look, 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 you see him. If he has a problem, he will come right away and hold a hand on me. But if he does so what you, you want? That's what I want. Okay, no problem. And by, by okay. the way, listen, no, no, no. I'm trying to be nice to you, okay? Then or you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank yeah, yeah, you. because you was aggressive already. You do not speak like a man. Because you come, you stop me like a brother. You say, oh, my brother, excuse me. Why are you doing that? You have the right to ask me, oh, and also I have the right to respond to you. But when you come mm, with aggressive, enough. when you come with aggressive, it's not fair no more. Fair. Because you do not ask me polite. If you do ask me polite, then I address you is something different. Okay. Because you don't have the right. But if you come, you address Jeez. somebody who do not know what is going on for me, it's not fair. For me, that is not fair. It should be fair, you question me. You have the right to question me. You have the right to okay. in the free country. Okay. I'm not the animal. You're a human being, I'm a human being. My swing don't have nothing to do with you. I'm not here to fight you. So I, I'm, I, I'm not challenging you for anything. But you don't have the right to go somebody. That is not good. That is not good. That is not good. Okay. Next time, ask me, ask me a person I will touch you. I'm, I'm, I'm not the, this, I'm not the bad person. Okay? You know, everybody, everybody has a motive. I'm not the bad person. I got you. Next time, ask me, I will touch you. Okay. You need a unit. Okay. Respect is very important. Okay. I don't like the other person. How you interpret this video is dependent upon who you think is in the right and who is in the wrong. Personally, I would want to see what happened exactly before the video started in order to understand that before I cast judgment or doubt on either of the two participators in the conflict. But regardless of who's at fault, I'm glad that it ended off in a handshake, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to point out here. Number one, if you're engaging with someone in conflict and that person has their hand in their pocket, you need to take note of that because you don't know what can come out of their pocket. Expect the worst and act accordingly. Secondly, your biggest tool in conflicts like this is distance. You can solve whatever disagreements that you may have as long as you are not in striking or stabbing distance. Allowing Black Broly to get as close to you to put his finger <laughs> in your face like this to tap on your glasses as you lean back is absolutely wild work. Glasses over here is giving a stance like he don't want it at all. He's not putting his hands up. He's not taking a defensive fighting stance, one foot in front of the other, like the complete and utter unit in front of him. And I believe he actually made a reference to going to get the cops. This is the stance of submission, but this is not needed when there's distance behind you. Move away. Thirdly, never take your eyes off of your opposition. If this guy did in fact truly have bad intentions, this would have been his perfect time to strike. Feeling a false sense of security around someone because that they're smaller is a big no-no. I've seen former fighters that have the body shape of him put in absolute work on behemoths like this. And lastly, it appears as this gentleman's family is there with him as well. Again, we don't have the beginning of this video, so I don't know if what he did actually deserve this type of response. But before you engage with people, you must understand those around you that might be collateral damage. I never forget a situation where I was with my father who ended up getting in an altercation in a Target back in the mid 90s. I was about 10 years old at the time. We were at checkout. My father asked a woman behind us to give us some space. She was crowding us. The boyfriend came around and began to press my father. My father gave himself enough space away from this man while also letting him know that this was about to be the biggest mistake in his life. Due to the security situation fizzled out, but my father let me know after that he would have had to put the man down and if the woman made any follow-up attempts in a violent manner, she would have 
have had to receive the same punishment. The lesson there is that when it comes to your self-defense and protecting yourself and the loved ones around you, stop at nothing to ensure that the situation is clear. Oftentimes, ignoring proper follow-up actions to any of the friends or people in the area will lead to immediate get back. So while I appreciate a handshake at the end, know why you're in it for, know who you're protecting, because walking away may be the best option. Remember this, my Gs, you win 100% of the altercations that you never get in. Most people in this world wanna be left alone. Mind your business, unless what they're doing is harming people who cannot defend themselves. Have you ever been broke before? Yeah. Many times. There was one point, listen, for every new level, there's a new devil. There's been many times, mm. even when I was making tens of millions of dollars, I was very cash poor. This is the big mm. misconception in entrepreneurship is that like, I made $10 million, I'm balling. No, I'm not. I got bills, like big bills. And mm -hmm. there was one point where I had a $550,000 Amex bill due the next day. I had payroll due the next day. That was probably like 200 something thousand dollars. And I had like 300 grand in my account. And I'm in my underwear in a 9,000 square foot house on the water by myself at three in the morning crying in my theater room. Like just picture this moment. Like right. I'm just a mess. I'm sobbing, snot bubbles. And I'm panicking because I'm like, what am I going to do? What mm -hmm. would you do? And then I went back to something my mentor told me. I would say F the Amex bill and pay the employees, keep the businesses float. What's great about credit cards is that you can use the bank's money without any collateral that you put up front. For example, if you do a refi on a house, well, if you're unable to pay the monthly bill, well, then they can take the house. But with credit cards, if you don't pay the credit card bill, there's really nothing that they can do besides just close your credit card account. But inevitably, I understand the guy and what it is that he's saying. If you're leveraging debt in order to initiate or maintain a business, you always need to understand the type of debt that you are leveraging very early on. And he said, listen, Cody, sales cures everything. You can hire all the best. You can figure everything out, sell your way out. This is why sales, persuasion, influence, mastering the art of copywriting. If you can sell well, you can sell your way out of any challenge. And yes. that's what I did. I pulled up my bootstraps. You know, winners have a bounce back spirit. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'm going to rally the team. We're going to fight like hell. We're going to come up with a new offer. We're going to launch it. in one day I'm going to call the credit card company and beg for some time and I'm going to get out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. within about a week and a half, we sold about $800,000 oh, worth of new product. He's a winner. I everything off. And I got myself out of that hole. I love that he mentioned those different skill sets as in relation to selling because being able to sell, whether it be a product, a service, a business, or even be able to sell yourself as a human being, whether it be in dating and relationships or to your employer, is a skill that is necessary to stand the test of time. Shit, it's even industry and recession proof. This is why sales is oftentimes the most compensated portion of any business. You have salespeople working for insurance companies that make well over than what the CEO makes in that very same insurance company. And why is that? Well, it's because they make money for the business as opposed to tying yourself to a back office corporate activity without direct ties to the revenue or direct ties to the bottom line. I don't know who needs to hear this, but they're an adult. They can figure this out for themselves. It's neither required nor fair for you to have to carry the responsibility, the consequences, or the blueprint to another able-minded, able-bodied, grown person's life and choices, regardless of the title that that person holds. The fog, fear, obligation, or guilt that they're attempting to lay on your shoulders for not doing for them what they should be figuring out or doing for themselves proves that their focus is not on their work, but rather manipulating someone else into doing it. Don't let that someone else be you. I think I see where she's going with this. And she's talking about um, people in your life that are anchors, you know, they walk around with a cloud over their head, expecting things from you that they're unable to do for themselves or concentrate on themselves long enough to fix for themselves. But initially, when she started to talk, I began to think about men in relationships, because as a masculine man in a relationship, you are taking on the burden or the duty of leadership. You lay out the roadmap. You put in place the blueprint. And you are responsible for the decisions that you are making as well as the decisions of your significant other. You take on the burden of being their coach. And if she is not coachable or not worthy to be led, then you send her back to the streets. But let's see what else that she has to say. Their stuff is not your responsibility. Depends. They're grown, but you are too. You're allowed to say no, even when it's painful, even when it's hard. Boundary up. I hope this helps. I remember asking a question. This had to be about a decade or so to one of my mentors specific to when do you know when you have to let a component of your friends from the past go? 
And what he said to me is that you have to take an honest assessment of their value within your life for the trajectory or the stage of your life that you're at and where you're trying to go in the future. If you're meeting up with your boy and the conversation is always about bitches and hoes, meanwhile, you want to get focused on your business and you guys always going out partying and drinking. Meanwhile, at the same time, you're trying to move into a space of focusing on real estate or starting up a product-focused business. He's engaging with you with leisure time, consuming entertainment, but none of that stuff has anything to do with the value-added things that you want to be able to consume to push your life further in a direction towards where that you want to go. As a man, you need to take an honest assessment into the time that you're spending and value added versus non-value added activities, and then also assess the men around you that are along for the same type of journey and or ride. You can't bring everyone with you. It's impossible. I'm so sick of people getting bad advice. And one of the worst pieces of advice that I hear all the time is don't date a broke man. Wrong. Wrong. It's not don't date a broke man. Don't date an uneducated man. For when he is intellectually inferior, he will assert his dominance in other arenas. Let me say that again, because I need to jot that down. When he is intellectually inferior, he will assert his dominance in other arenas. When he can't match your intellect, when he can't match you in conversation, when he can't really debate you, when he can't really offer much to a talk, he will assert his dominance in other arenas. His strength will show up in other places. And those places will be emotional or physical abuse or both. Online? You need an educated man for an educated man will know how to escape poverty an educated man has an understanding of patriarchal system an educated man understands feminism and an educated man understands how to learn when you deal with an uneducated man you're dealing with a man who never had to be a student you can't teach somebody who has never learned how to be taught. So he ain't going to give you no different, but broke. That's the only thing he could do different for you. But an educated man will get it, especially for women. Y'all are getting degrees at higher rates, which means you're escaping poverty at higher rates, which means you're making more money and it means you're intellectually superior. So if he's not beating you intellectually and financially, where else can he beat you at? You know, upon further examination of this video, uh, I'm beginning to now think that this was a biological woman on hormones talking ill of the men that he or she is projecting hate from what they were biologically born. And I do understand the premise of dating, not solely just based off of money, yet education, but I wouldn't say that it's education either. I just think that it's a level of intelligence combined with a level of leadership. But no, I don't think less educated men who can't verbally debate, and why would a man want to be verbally debating with a woman, is going to result into some other violent acts or other ways that he can attempt to control you. It sounds like the prescription of the women that you're talking to to date based off education while good in nature, also prescribing that the outcome of these men as being violent demonstrates your hate for men. People like this will only prescribe a certain type of education as being intelligent. So if you don't believe in the doctrine of feminism, then you are not intelligent according to people like this. This is wrong. These are loud, confused people with a microphone that they can project to the world. If you're going up on your girlfriend's Instagram feed and you see that she watches characters like this, do understand that your time with her is extremely limited. Are you a feminist? A feminist? Explain that to me. Got it! Got it! I don't know how I'm gonna eat. You think I have a mindset for anything you're talking about? The only thing I wanna know is how am I gonna pay my bills? There are people right now that feel like that walking around. Now they feel like they're drowning. So if you get somebody's head above water for let's just say three months, then we could talk about the LLCs, the mentorship, the real money. But when I'm drowning, the only thing I'm trying to do is get, get above, above water. water. Yeah. One of the biggest issues that we have when it comes to talking about money as a society, specifically in North America, is that we blame financial challenges and struggles on the individual instead of looking at the larger societal problems. When it comes to people that have a lot of debt, that struggle with overspending, that struggle with just managing their money or sticking to a budget, it is always labeled as an individual problem. Something's wrong with you. You need to do better. You need to figure it out. You need to have more willpower, all of these things. Instead of just like backing up and thinking, okay, why are these individuals having 
struggles with their finances. And the majority of the reason why they're struggling is because of the larger societal issues at play, like the cost of living and inflation, like capitalism, the patriarchy, the oh! wage gap, the racial wage gap, um, the <gasps> lack of su financial support for people with disabilities, uh, unresolved trauma, and the lack of mental health support in our society. Please, please, whatever you do, do not, do not listen to this wokey police. All my G's out there, please understand. Listening to women like this and taking this as advice is going to leave you homeless. Sorry. You were born in a capitalistic society and you're a man. No one cares. No one gives a shit. Do better. Work on your skill set. Work on your talents. Get up off of the goddamn couch. Stop consuming video games throughout your entire goddamn day. Give it all for the hub. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Stop. Do better. No, do not listen to this. A country of this would be a country of losers. You have to understand that. A country of this would produce nothing. They blame everybody except for themselves and take no accountability as they look for help as they look for government assistance, as they look for ways to try to come up, such as divorcing you, such as asking for child support, so that they can live better without actually having to try harder. That's not the society that you grew up in or you were a part of. This is not communism. We are not socialist. That's not how we're structured. It's capitalistic. It's not going to change. Get over it. Be a man. You remember like the pictures of the men, they have them like in the 1910s on top of skyscrapers, building shit, lack of safety harnesses. Those types of men listening to this drivel talking about the lack of mental health support for the reason that you are. Those men were tough. Those men got active. Not listening to this weak ass woke drivel that you're hearing right here. The patriarchy. The patriarchy built most of the shit that you consider luxurious within your life. The privilege here is palpable and it disgusts me. Insane healthcare costs in the US, like the list goes on. And then beyond just the societal issues, it's also like so much of a person's financial challenges will come from their family, their culture, how they were raised, um, their childhood Excuses. and trauma Excuses. and generational Excuses. trauma. And Excuses. so all of these things Excuses. put together really makes you realize that this is not the individual's fault. Oh. And yet we place the blame on the individual. We point fingers at the individual, basically, it's society, the government's way of being like, we can't see what's happening. This isn't our issue. This is your issue. Because that way they can take the blame off of them and they can absolve their responsibility and they don't have to actually put the work in to make the changes, which is what really needs to happen. Excuses are tools of the incompetent. They build bridges to nowhere and tunnels to nothingness. I hope to God she's not a single mother with a son or she is destined to create a weak, pathetic, soft, excuse laden young man a lot of you guys might be suffering from the programming of ideologies like this this is not how masculine men think feel or operate there was no value to this should the government be held accountable for things that they're doing with our taxes absolutely but her line of thinking in blaming others for her misgivings or her shortcomings is pathetic mm -hmm.